So hi, I'm Paul. I'm Tammy. And we're, we're inseparable. inseparable. And we're also uh, the condition formerly known as Asperger's. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to do a bunch of videos on this. And uh, so anything... That's the name of the blog that I started too. Right. But we, we can give a link to that below the, the video. So what are we talking about today? Well, I, in the first video we did, um, I did a lot of the talking and I just wanted to do another follow up and ask you, you know, how do you feel as my husband um, now that we've discovered this, you know, Asperger's autism? Um, I just want to know your perspective. Well, I mean, you, you know, when you, as you mentioned in the first video, uh, you saw it on the report, kind of ignored it, showed it to me. And I said, well, let's not discount it. Let's, you know, dig into it. And, and when I started digging into it and finding more and more and more, wow, 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 you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, I was convinced at that point, um, but I had a, a separate concern and that was convincing you, you know, not that it mattered. It's not like, I'm gaslighting you. Um, it's not a mental illness, um, but we we try to get testing and no luck on that. And then I showed you a video done by Olivia Hobbs, mm -hmm. and it really applied to something we went through. And we we're like, wow. And you you know, and then you kind of went away. And a few days later, you come back. You said, I've been watching watching a bunch of Olivia's videos and. I am. I am. It's, it's mm -hmm. what I am. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I felt like she was my twin. Right. And I was like, you know, like all the things that she was saying, I could totally relate to. And and, and even to the point of using the same feminine hygiene products. And it's like, <laughs> whoa, you know. So, yeah. um, but, you know, it. what it did is um, we did that, that video, uh, music video kind of hinting at first. And then we came right out. To say it, you know, I've been searching so long, mm -hmm. you know, to find an answer. And we searched so long and we were given, you were given certain diagnosis. And I'll just talk about one of them was the PST, PTSD. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and that's a hard one to fix, yeah. you know. Uh, but what I, in, in my research for that, I found that. Uh, somebody said, if everything else fails, you just have to separate the person away from triggers and stress. Yeah. Well, guess what? That's worked. <laughs> it, it, it works for um, autism as well. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, so, but I, I was very relieved because, well, now we're not searching anymore. Now we have to search out and find out what do we do. And it mm -hmm. also shed a whole lot of light on the past yeah i mean in our relationship in your life and the mistakes that i made you know not knowing this if i had known this i would have done things a little bit differently mm -hmm. but you you can't help it you know this is the way people think people think that everybody thinks the way they think yeah and it's not true mm -hmm. you know and um you may tell me something and, and I might come back and say, well, you know, either you can't accept the truth or you're just flat out lying because my way of thinking, it can't possibly be true. But it is true. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. Now we know, okay, it, it really was true. It wasn't a matter of denial or, you know, whatever, um, that you have a totally different perspective. And then the way, like you're asking me for a different perspective and the way your mind analysis and analyzes that it's yeah my, my my brain is wired differently so if a person's neurodiverse and they're communicating with a person who's neurotypical it's like both of you think a certain way and it's different so you kind of really have to focus on communication um and not getting defensive of like trying feeling like the other person's correcting you or whatever. It's just like you're trying to communicate the way you're thinking and they're trying to communicate the way they're thinking. So you just have to more listen to each other. And You have to be patient. You have yeah. to say, hold on, babe. I'm just trying to explain something. I'm not, you know, because you'll get defensive <laughs> or I'll get defensive. Yeah. 
you know, and, um, but, you know, one of the things about this, and we call that blog, you know, the condition formerly known as Asperger's, is we feel that a big disservice was done to people with the condition that they just rolled this all into autism. Because if you go and you tell people, well, my wife has autism, and say, oh, no, she doesn't. She's doing and, and the things that they know traditionally what is associated with autism mm -hmm. is male autism on the lower end of the spectrum. And even more, I think that should happen more than even taking it out from underneath the umbrella, if you want to keep it under the umbrella, but split female and male autism because they are totally different. Mm -hmm. Male and female Asperger's are totally, well, I won't say totally different. There are certain things that are alike and there are certain things that are the complete opposites. Mm -hmm. You know, and when people are generally familiar with male autism, male Asperger's, you look at a female and say, you don't have it. And the um, condition you're more likely to be diagnosed as a male five times more likely than, than a female. But that doesn't mean you're five more times likely to have it, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, and the medical profession needs to get caught up on this. I mean, um, there are some problems that could arise from this thing being misdiagnosed, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I was, I was very relieved. Mm -hmm. I mean, feel like I don't have to be, and and my attitude towards it i mean and it was so similar to the finding out about the cmt and that's how we found out about the uh being asd you know mm -hmm. it's like um i wanted you to get testing but i wasn't in doubt yeah about you know i just wanted a confirmation and it was the same thing with the with the autism asperger's uh, and met with a lot more resistance there it's a lot more expensive. Um, and the funny thing is that CMT, they can't do anything for that either. Yeah. <laughs> they can't do anything for either. Both are genetic conditions. Yeah. And they, there seems to be a tie. I'm not saying that everybody that has autism has CMT or everybody that has CMT has autism. But there does seem to be a prevalence and a link, link between certain form of of CMT and autism, and there's a lot of people in your group. Yeah. For the CMT that, yeah, that I have think, autism. You know. Well, I'm lucky in the sense that you're very understanding because a lot of spouses aren't understanding when it comes to CMT or autism. Um, you know, some of the some of the people I've I've been in touch with that have communicated that, and I I really that I think that's pretty terrible that you know, the person that you're supposed to be closest to uh, doesn't understand. And so I'm very thankful that you're understanding and have put up with me all these years because I know it hasn't been easy. Neither of us really knew why I was the way I was emotionally and all that. But you've always been patient and loving with me. And I'm thankful for that. Well, I think a lot of that, and they say a combination that will work for a person when they have this might be a rescuer personality. Yeah. And I kind of have that rescuer manager personality um, so that, and that can be a bad thing in, in, you know, if you're dealing with something else, you know, because they would say, well, you know, unless people are allowed to experience the consequences of their decisions, they won't learn. Well, that's not gonna happen with autism. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not, not the case with autism and, and, you know, and I think that actually you, you can learn from certain situations, even if you don't suffer the consequences or, or things like that, but uh, it works out really well. You know, I think if you didn't need me and you were, you know, everything else, who knows? But you know, the other thing too is, I mean, we're just against all odds, um, a statistic, 70% of third marriages fail, third marriage. 80% <laughs> of uh, marriages with an ASD partner fail. And I can see that because of communication problems, mm -hmm. because of intimacy problems and, and things like that. And then 95%, but I won't 
I'm just going to use this because it's out there on the internet, but I don't believe it. 95% of age gap relationships when there's 20 or more years fail. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, we should have failed a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe because we have them all. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all work together. It's kind of like that episode of The Simpsons where, where Mr. Burns has Three Stooges disease. Yeah. And they say, is he healthy? No, he's the sickest man on earth. But because he's got so many illnesses and so many things wrong, they can't get through the door. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we we'll leave you on a funny note. Um, so thanks for watching. Look forward for our next video. Take care. We love you. God bless. Bye. Bye. <laughs>